Hey, what's up guys? I'm back with another countdown video for you all about the mini games of old school RuneScape. I would have made this video about RuneScape 3's mini games, but to be honest, I don't know much about RuneScape 3's mini games. Uh, perhaps in the future I'll do an RS3 one after I research them a bit more. But for now, old school RuneScape mini games will have to do, I'm afraid. Also, before the video starts, I'd like to tell you guys two things. One, thank you, Tim Cash, aka Crash OPS, for the awesome new channel logo. He took time out of his day to make it for me, and I really like how he kept the original one at the same time and just added a new badass sword to it. I think it looks absolutely sick. Number two, there's a straw poll in the description, and if you click on the link, you'll see four top ten suggestions I've taken from the comment sections of previous videos that I think would not only be fun for me to make, but also fun for you guys to watch. Whatever gets voted the highest will be the next countdown video, and for those of you who voted for ones that may have came in second place or third place, don't worry, I'm not going to completely exclude those from the channel, I will do them at a later date, but the most top voted one will be the one that I do next. And without further interruption, let's get the countdown going. Number ten, Castle Wars. I definitely wanted to include this safe minigame simply for the fact that almost every RuneScape player has played it at one point in time or another, although sadly it seems as if most people have forgotten all about Castle Wars. I still love this minigame simply for the fact that even if you're a low combat level, you can still be of use to your teammates. If you're not strong enough to go after the other team's flag yourself, or to even help the flag carrier return to your base, you can still help out by operating the rock launching catapults, setting up barricades making it harder for your enemy to steal your flag or escape with your flag, and you can also patrol the tunnels underground too just in case, and let's be honest guys, who didn't love smashing the enemy team, or even your own teammates with that rock slide that you can make fall by using those one explosive potions on them. Overall this minigame is very straightforward and one of my favorites, and I miss playing it very much. Number 9, Blast Furnace. It's a very useful minigame located in Keldegrim that is used for smelting bars which regularly would require coal to make. The furnace here only requires half as many coals when smelting usually, so it can be useful when smelting ores that require more coal. It's designed to be used by a team of players, but it can also be worked by a single player if the correct strategy is followed. The Blast Furnace world on Old School RuneScape is World 358, and to start this minigame you're going to have to obviously have access to Keldegrim, which you can get by starting the Giant Dwarf quest. You also need level 35 fire making for fueling the stove, 30 strength for pumping the stove, 30 agility for pedaling the conveyor belt, and 30 crafting for fixing the broken pipes and parts of the pedaling machine. This is a safe minigame, although you could possibly take some very low damage from the heat pump if the process is done incorrectly. There's also an entrance fee if you don't have level 60 smithing or higher. If you don't have that, then you must pay 2500 coins, or if you have a ring of charos, then you'll only have to pay 1250 coins. Also, be careful if you decide to do this minigame because it does take a little bit of focus Focus, and if you log out during this minigame while your ore is on the conveyor belt, you will lose it. So, other than that, it's a great minigame and it's very useful if you have a good group of players helping you and you helping them as well. Number 8, the Mage Training Arena. This safe minigame resolves around magic and is located north of the dueling arena. Using various spells during four different rooms here, you will earn what is called pizzazz points, which can be exchanged to buy items in the shop on the top floor of the arena. In order to at least use one of the spells for the arena, players must have a minimum of at least level 7 magic. However, to be able to interact with all the rooms, a magic level of 33 is recommended, but the higher your magic level is, the better. Also, it's a good idea to have high rune crafting before you do this, especially for Iron Man accounts as you are going to need quite a lot of runes. 54 is the recommended RC level so that you will be able to craft all the runes needed for the actual minigame itself. The four runes are the Telekinetic Theater, the Alchemist's Playground, the Enchanting Chamber, and the Creature Graveyard. If you have time and energy for this minigame, it could give you some good cash if you earn enough points. For example, purchasing the Mage's Book here is traded amongst players in the GE for roughly around 6.8 mil, and also depending on how skilled you are with this minigame itself, XP here really isn't that bad. Number 7, Pest Control. I'm adding this safe minigame towards the bottom of the list simply for the fact that most people usually don't like this minigame and really have no reason to come back to it after they've achieved what is most wanted from this minigame which is the Void Knight ranged armor. You can buy Void Knight melee and magic armor here too, but most players just want the range outfit instead. Really the only reason in my opinion that you would ever need to come back here after you're done with this minigame is maybe if you accidentally lose your Void Knight armor, which I I have done by the way, and it really sucks, so if you've ever lost a void, I truly am sorry. <laughs> Getting the Void Knight range armor set, if you focus 100% from stop to start, will roughly take you anywhere, depending on your combat stats, the boat you use, and the team you have, maybe about 8 to 13 hours I'd say. It's somewhat great combat experience, but I'd rather train Slayer with combat, as most players probably would too, but it is a fun mini game to do if you literally have nothing else to do, and just simply feel like murdering stuff. 
Number 6, Clan Wars. That's right, if you don't already know it, Clan Wars is actually considered a minigame apparently. The red portal as it exists in RuneScape 3 does not actually exist in Old School RuneScape's Clan Wars minigame however, so this is considered a safe minigame. Just as its name suggests, you can battle players here 1v1 style or with a huge clan if you ever just want to have a little social fun in the game. Leaders of clans can customize the terms and conditions for winning, and once both leaders from two clans have agreed, their minigame will begin. Only ranking members of clans who are captains or higher can initiate challenges, and clan may will be notified in the clan chat that a war has begun and can enter the purple portal. There's a two minute timer and the wall separating the clans in the map and at the end of the timer when the wall collapses the battle begins. Players who die are sent to jail depending on the game option and can go back in or will be unable to fight again. There's also an option to watch the fight at any time via the orbs scattered around across the battlefield maps. In addition to the purple portal there's also a free for all portal too and players will recognize it by its white color and don't worry you don't have to worry about your your items once again if you die here. It's a fun mini game and I'm not quite sure if people really play it or not, but it has great potential to be a fun activity for clans who are rivals with each other. Number 5, the Tsar Fight Caves where Jad awaits. This place will either make you more happy than you've ever been in your entire scaping career, or it will make you break your mouse from trying to tap that logout button so hard. It was released in 2005 and it's said to be a safe minigame, however you are going to feel anything but safe while you're inside this minigame if you're trying to get the ever popular fire cape. After all the mental preparation and spending loads of money on your supplies that you're going to need to make it all the way through the minigame, you're probably going to end up failing or panicking the very first time you ever face Jad on wave 63. After wave 62 is over, your supplies will basically be spent. You can log out during this minigame, but if you do, whatever wave you're on will reset, even though whatever supplies you have used already on the wave will not reset. I believe the average attempts people make before actually succeeding against Jad and receiving their fire cape are probably maybe on the third or fourth try that they ever attempt it. There's also recently been added a timer within the minigame itself, so if you are a pro at doing the fight caves, you can test yourself and see just how quick you can actually defeat Jad and all of the other waves. If you lose, you will rage and will have wasted a lot of money, however if you win, victory will be oh so sweet. Number 4, Treasure Trails. Treasure Trails is actually considered a minigame, and depending on what level clue scrolls you attempt, it can be debated whether this is a safe minigame or a dangerous minigame. Some harder clue scrolls require you to enter the most deepest parts of the wilderness to actually be able to complete your clue scroll, and completing quests is a must if you ever want to actually complete the hard or elite clue scrolls, as some of them require you visiting the most western elven lands too. Most of the time you won't get the specific prize you're trying to get, however there are a few people who have received some of the most sought rewards being the infamous third age items, or maybe the Robin Hood attire that could potentially gain you a fair bit of gold. You're definitely going to want to have a spade, a sextant, a watch, a chart, teleportation runes, enchanted jewelry for teleporting, a draymond or lunar staff to access the fairy rings if you started the fairy tale part 2 quest, loads of super energy potions and stamina potions, and a good bit of GP in your inventory for faster transportations for like using the charter ships, or items needed for emote related clues. I personally don't really like doing clue scrolls, I have a hard level 1 in my bank right now that's been there forever uh, and I started it but I needed to have completed all the quests required to get to the elven lands before I can actually continue it so I sort of quit on that one for now. If any of you are doing a clue skull right now then I wish you all the best of luck and I hope you get the reward you're looking for. Number 3, Barbarian Assault. I might be biased placing this safe minigame at number 3 in the countdown because it is actually my favorite minigame of all time, however I definitely think it deserves a more higher spot on the countdown simply for the fact that you can receive a fire torso in the game, which is one of the best play bodies you can have in RuneScape next to the Bandos chestplate in 07. And also because of the penance rewards it also gives you that could potentially lower your weight and help you with your skilling. Depending on who is actually on your team, however, you may or may not like this minigame. In Barbarian Assault, your team will basically only be as strong as your weakest teammate. It's very socially oriented, and you do have to stay with your specific team that you're on most of the time until you reach Wave 10 where you have to fight the Penance Queen, which is extremely tough if you're not all working together and having good communication. It's a very adrenaline rushing minigame if your team struggles a lot, and it's very satisfying if you've got an amazing team with great communication that owns every wave you play together. Almost everybody has to play this minigame at some point in another in the RuneScape career if they want to be a successful Zerker or a successful main account. It's a great minigame and I think the design of it all when it was released was absolutely fantastic. Number 2, The Duel Arena. That's right, The Dueling Arena is actually classified in RuneScape as a minigame and it is played by a lot of people who, for lack of better words, are addicted to gambling their banks away. 
I myself used to be addicted to the Duel Arena, but I have long since promised myself that I would never be going there again after some absolutely tough losses, but who knows, maybe one day I'll start a staking with Moat Flock series or something. So many people have come here to stake mostly, but sometimes you will find those players that just want to have some fun and see what they're capable of against other players in 1v1 combat. You can also be very anal about how you choose to fight, or you can just leave it to fate and not check anything in the preferences before fighting. One thing I like to do, especially when I'm alking for magic experience, is going up to the top parts of the viewing balcony at the Duel Arena and watching the fights. I love seeing people's conversations as they know they're either going to win or unfortunately lose. Number 1, Nightmare Zone. This safe minigame was never actually around in the real 2007 version of RuneScape in the past, however this minigame is quite popular amongst a lot of 07 players today. NMZ is a combat based minigame located north of Yanil, northwest of the bank, and the minigame involves players having dreams to fight bosses that they have previously already fought against before during quests that they've completed already. It's run by Dominic Onion who is a mage from Lunar Isle and you actually must have completed at least 5 of the required quests to be able to play this minigame. There's three modes to play on in Nightmare Zone, which are Practice Mode, Endurance Mode, and Rumble Mode. Practice Mode is free, and Endurance is 1k coins for the Normal Mode of it, and 5k for the Hard Mode, and Rumble requires 2k for Normal Mode and 6k for Hard Mode. If you log out inside the arena, your dream will end as if you died, and you will not be able to return to the arena if you logged out also. The rewards you can receive from here from your earned points from inside the minigame are quite nice though, and are located in a chest near Dominic, and they are split into three categories which are resources, upgrades, and benefits. Resources include herb lore ingredients, elemental runes, and items that are only obtainable via the minigame such as compost potions, scrolls of redirection, and the upgrades can imbue certain items for reward points which increases your stats as a whole, and the benefits category of rewards includes certain potions that can only be used within the minigame itself further helping you continue your journey through your dreams next time you play. It's a great minigame and you can also solo everything with some Guthans armor, or you can have a team in rumble mode, or play with your friends for insane combat experience, or just for fun to revisit some quest bosses you might miss murdering. That's it for this countdown, and if you know what I should count down next, post it in the comments and let's make it happen guys. Thank you so much for almost 33,000 subscribers already. Like, can you guys ever just slow down? Just, just for a little bit. I'm just kidding. I'd also like to thank these people who donated recently. You guys really helped me out quite a bit with your donations, and I appreciate every single one of you, especially those of you who even told me beforehand that you were going to donate, and you actually kept your word with it. Like, that's just insane, so thank you. I really do appreciate you. Also, I really, really wanted to run something by you guys. This could potentially put out another 100 plus videos on this channel for the future. I'm thinking about starting a RuneScape lore episode series, and the way I would edit it would be sort of like how I edited the timeline video that you guys really liked. I'd start from pre-first age and just keep working literally until uh, the sixth age and that would be the end of the series. Um, the way it would work would be pre-first age part one, part two, part three, part four, and then go into the first age part one, part two, part three, and you know that's just how it would work all the way up until the sixth age and it would be a lot more videos out on the channel. It would be so much work but you guys are definitely worth that if it's something that you know would entertain you guys because I feel like like, a lot of people don't know much about the lore of RuneScape, and myself included, actually, so it would be fun to learn with you guys about it. So definitely let me know what you think about that suggestion in the comment section for sure. And no, don't worry, I will not stop doing countdown videos if I start doing lore videos. One more thing, I have purchased a Lenovo Eraser X315. For those of you who are curious as to what type of gaming computer I'm going to have here soon uh, to play some games and start streaming, and I might also upgrade it a bit, it can be upgraded just a little bit, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that anytime soon yet. Uh, but it will be here in about 4 to 5 business days, so I'm really looking forward to that and being able to try streaming out. Once again, thank you guys for watching. That's all I've got for you today, and I will talk to you all later.